Hey guys, it's Kaler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. This is episode seven of Design Build Launch. This will be the final episode because today we are going to launch and publish our website. Before we do that, we need to add some quick SEO, edit our project settings, and then we'll go over how you can actually publish this website and have it live by the end of this video. So that's what we're doing today. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do before we edit our project settings is do our SEO. And we want to do this because we want the search engine to be able to find our website. So over here on the left in the pages category for home, I'm just gonna select the settings icon and that will pull up all the home settings. So we wanna make sure that we have the easiest way for search engines to find us. So to do that under the SEO settings here, this is going to give us a preview of what this will look like when someone is Googling something and our site pops up in that listing. So we're gonna make sure we set a good title tag. So it's up to you what you would like to put. For now, I'm just putting my name and then my job title. For the meta description, again, this is completely up to you. For me, I'm just going to paste in the info that I have in my about section on the page. Now for the open graph settings here, this is gonna be when you're sharing a link on social media, such as like Twitter. So when you post a link, it'll have that little pop-up that has a window with an image and title and description. So this is what the graph is going to do. So for this, I'm going to actually use the same as my SEO. So it's gonna automatically allow me to do that very easily by checking those boxes. And we're gonna to want to set an image here, that way our site isn't blank and it just pops up as text. So they give you a recommended size, which is 1200 pixels by 630. So here in Adobe XD, I'm going to drag out an artboard that is 1200 by 630. And what I like to do for this is just simply select our design and export this as an image, and then I'll drag it into this artboard. So I'm gonna do that now. So I just exported that as an image, and I'm going to drag that in. And when you have that artboard over here selected, you can just hit Command E, and it will allow you to export it. So with that in there, I'm going to scale this to the dimensions of the artboard. I'm gonna get that framed how I like it. So it actually is cutting off that text, so I just copied it over there, scaled it down to where it would be so I can get that in there. And once I have that, I'm going to select the artboard and hit Command E. So I'm just going to export that as a graph image or whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to hit Export. So back in Webflow, I'm just going to quickly hit Save. I'm going to go to our images here, and then I'm going to select Upload. And from here, I'm going to grab that graph image and hit Choose. So once I have that uploaded, if I hover over the image here in the assets, I can click the settings cog there, and then you can see we have graph image.png, and I'm gonna select this icon to open that here in my browser. And then I'm going to grab the link it generates here. And then we can just close out that page. And back over here into our home settings, just going to paste in that URL, and you can see that our graph automatically shows an image of our website with our title and description set from our title and meta description up here. So we have all that good. Then down here for the site search settings, we definitely don't want that checked because we want people to be able to find this. All this looks good and we don't need any custom code for this project. So with all of that set, we can hit save and we have our SEO done for our homepage. If you did make this a multi-page website, you would want to do that for each one of your pages. But for now, we have all of our pages completed. So I'm going to go up here to the Webflow icon and go to the project settings. So here in the project settings, we're gonna start with the general tab. For this, I'm going to set the website name to the same thing we use for our homepage since it's a one page website. So now that I have that set, that's okay. I'm gonna leave my subdomain the same here. This is for when we preview this with the staging link they give us. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that how it is. We don't need a folder. And then the last thing down here we need is our icons. And these are when you have things bookmarked or save on like a phone home screen. Uh, we're gonna need these two at 32 pixels and at 256. So we'll go make those now. So since we've been working this entire time in Adobe XD, I just went ahead and made a 32 pixel by 32 pixel artboard. And same thing with 256 by 256. I'm gonna select both of these holding shift and selecting each one. And then I'm gonna turn off the appearance fill. That way we have a transparent background. And I'm just going to zoom in here. I'm going to grab a square and make it the full width and height. Remove the border. And then I'm going to drag in the border radius to something like four or so. And we'll just set that to our default black. And then in here, I'm going to add just a C for now. So I've pasted in a copy of our logo just so we can see this. 
And I'm going to make this white, scale this down a little bit, and try to get that as centered as possible there. And then we'll copy this, holding Alt and dragging to the 256 size. And then I'm going to scale this up to fill out this section. And then we'll put the C in the center now. And now we'll scale it up. And then finally, I want to adjust my corner to somewhat match what we have over here. So this is a very simple logo and I wouldn't recommend doing a logo like this, but for this project, since I'm not actually going to publish this, I'm going to use this for now. I would recommend creating your own branding and having your own logo. But for the purpose of needing fave icons, I'm just going to use these for now. So I'm gonna simply select both of those and hit Command E to export them. So back here in Webflow, I'm gonna select Upload and I'm going to grab each corresponding icon. There's the 32 by 32. And then I'm going to grab the 256 by 256 and we have those set. That's pretty much everything we need here in the general settings. So I'm gonna hit save changes and we've now updated that. So now we're at the point of the tutorial where we're ready to get our domain and hosting set up for the website. So first thing we need our domain name. Currently we're using a free staging domain and we're doing that with design build launch dot webflow dot io so i could change the subdomain to kaylor edwards and it would be kaylor edwards dot webflow dot io i wouldn't recommend publishing with that just because it doesn't look the most professional i would recommend getting your own and there are a number of different companies offering domain names like godaddy is a really good one it's very popular and here you can get them as low as 99 cents so if you don't already have a domain name take your time find a good one that's not already taken if it is taken People do sell them, but they get pretty pricey, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. You could use something like a .io or a .net instead. But once you get a domain name, you're good to go for that part. The next thing we need is hosting, and there's two ways of doing that. You can host with Webflow, they have a hosting tab here, or you can use a company like GoDaddy that offers hosting as well. It's completely up to you who you wanna host with. If you host with Webflow, one of the most convenient things is you can go to publish, and you can select your custom domain and then publish it. And that way it automatically updates your website based on what you've done here in the designer. But if you want to use another company's hosting, such as GoDaddy, you can simply export your website as code with this icon right here, and then you'll have to upload those files to their server. Every time you wanna update the website, you'll have to do that again, export this, and then upload it to their server. And so that's why I would suggest using Webflow, especially when you get into using their CMS and updating blogs daily or doing other client work. It makes it really easy to publish from here. So now that we've covered domains and hosting, let's go ahead and take a look at how you can get this set up. So firstly, let's cover the plans. So Webflow operates on an account plan system and a hosting plan system, and all of which you can choose based on your needs. So let's look at the account plans first. To get here, you can go up to the account dropdown and select plans, and that'll take you to here. If this is your first ever Webflow project, the starter plan is probably what you're using. And you can see here, it allows you to have two projects, uh, but the only downside here is you don't have the option to export for code. So if you're not using Webflow to host and you'll have to export this as code, you'll have to upgrade to something like the light plan, which is my current plan right now, because I need more than two projects. As you can see here, I get 10. So based on what your needs are, you wanna select one of these. For this tutorial, the only thing you need is the starter plan, which is completely free unless you want to export this to another hosting service. So once you've selected your account plan, you'll need to pick your hosting plan. So here in our projects, I've selected our design build launch project and under the hosting tab, you can see the various hosting packages that they have. Currently we're using the enhanced staging, which is free. And this allows us to publish the website to a subdomain of webflow.io, such as designbuildlaunch.webflow.io. And once again, I would not suggest using this domain for anything other than testing how your website functions and looks in the browser. I would recommend getting your own domain. And so to connect to that, you'll at least have to have the basic plan. But again, choose whatever plan that fits your needs and then just make sure you add it to this project so that you have your hosting activated. For this project, I went with the basic plan. So I've currently added that. And so my hosting is ready to go. All we have to do before we publish our website is set up our domain and our DNS settings. So I'm gonna select add a custom domain now. So I'm gonna paste mine in 
and then select add domain. Right away, it detects that this is with GoDaddy. So I'm going to select connect with GoDaddy. So I'm already logged in with GoDaddy and it's asking me to connect. So I'm going to select connect. So once that's done, you have your two websites here, your domain without the www will be up top more than likely. And then down below you'll have www.kayloredwards.com for example. And then you just need to click on make default to set the default. So I just set www to the default and now we're ready to go back to our designer. But one quick thing to add before we go do that, if your domain name did not pop up and say connect like mine did, and instead it makes you add your DNS records manually, I will link a tutorial from Webflow themselves in the description. Doing it the manual way is a little bit more complex. You have to add two A records and one C name record, which isn't that bad. But if you've never messed with DNS settings before, I'll have that video down in the description so you can follow along step by step if you didn't get that automatic connect like I did. So let's go ahead and move to the designer now to publish this website. So back here in the designer, I'm gonna select publish. I'm going to check the box next to my domain name. And for now, I'm going to uncheck the staging website since I don't want that one to update. And I'm going to publish to selected domains. And it says it was published successfully. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And with that, we can navigate to our website and we have the final finished product. That was designing, building, and launching a website from scratch, writing no code with Adobe XD and Webflow. So that's going to do it for Design, Build, Launch Season 1. If you guys want to see more content like this, let me know down in the comments or by giving this video a thumbs up. If you made this into your own website, feel free to tweet it at me at Kaylor Edwards. If you haven't already, subscribe for more content coming soon on the channel. And as always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.